Come and have a look at this. Hello everybody, my name is Alex Askaroff and I write the Sewing Machine Pioneer series on Amazon and the On The Road series of sewing books. And what I want to show you today is this amazing Heinrich Grossman Dresden machine. And of course, out of all the Singers and Wilcox and Gibbs, Heinrich Grossman was the main hat making machine maker and they made machines right up until the bombing of Dresden in World War II and they made some incredible machines. You can see here what this is the Anita not the Anita B the Anita and what's very special about this is it's a zigzag chain stitch hat machine and it has a pull away guide very much like the other machines and you can adjust it with the little thumb nut there so you can guide it that would be for guiding for tapes and different types of things or getting the edge of the hats and all of this information I always tell people I, I've put it all it's called the Luton hat trade but it's a bit misleading really the Luton hat trade was the center of hat making for most of Europe it was so big in Luton that even Grossman in Dresden named one of their machines Lutonia, the Lutonia. I'm dressed up like this because it's been below zero for several weeks and it's absolutely freezing outside. Today's the first day where we, where we can film outside. But what I want to show you is the zigzag in action. This is going to be really interesting. If this poor little machine at below zero is going to actually move Basically, it would be for doing a chain stitch, but with a little bit of a zigzag. So we'll show you. I always start the first stitch off by hand to catch the stitch. And then I'll snip the thread if I can find my little scissors. Oh, here they are. Now, get that out of the way. And we're going to just see. The machine is pretty much standard as you can see it comes down through the arm then round the tension unit then it comes across to the bottom guide there up through the needle bar I keep, always keep forgetting to put it through there and it must this is the important thing it must go just in between these two plates there and the reason is as the machine turns you'll see a little plunger close that up and then as the machine turns some more it releases it so that spring opens and closes and that's really important then it comes down there's another little guide there and it goes straight through the, the needle. chain stitch hat machines you only have the top thread and with all chain stitch machines and the underneath is caught by the hook and as you can see here that's exactly the same as a Wilcox and Gibbs hook I mean Heinrich Grossman machines copied most of the Wilcox and Gibbs quite legally because all the patents had run out but what they did with this little beauty was the extra zigzag what you can see also from this angle is the enormous foot and the enormous feed because they were pulling through much stronger stiffer work and they pulled them through with a much longer stitch and that's what all this mechanism at the back here is for is to, is all for the feed mechanism and as you can see the feed is adjustable by the little thumb nut just there and so you can move the feed up and down if you want it to pull through even harder if you like there's a little bit of decoration still left on this little beauty now what this shows is if you look at the top there you have a zigzag stitch and now I'm going to turn it over but it's the first time you'll ever seen a zigzag chain stitch and look at that beautiful zigzag straight chain stitch underneath and of course the benefit of the chain stitch is the give in the fabric so it was just a useful extra tool that the hat makers would have people who could afford this You've got to remember that this machine amazingly enough was you know most of a year's wage so only the expensive few bought it but it was so useful and of course this is where the guide comes in where you can just get the guide exactly to where you want it and away you go oh the thread's broken that always pull at least six inches of thread out of the needle or it does exactly that it unthreads as it starts to sew that's a good tip let's just throw so th that back through there put that back through there start the stitch again 
should really know this after 50 years. And here we go. And so that's where you'd use the guide. And of course, let's just take that out of the way and pull that out. And then we'll show you what you do it through the brim of a hat or something like that. And you've got a tension release on this one. This is what's really good. This machine has got the extra button here. This is called the vibrator and you, and you push this in or out if you want it to lift the foot. When you start to actually sew, you actually can use that to lift the foot to start the very center, the button of the hat, of the straw hat. Of course it's straw plate where this thing really comes into its own. We're just going round the ridge of a straw hat where it's folded over just to seal it up and stop it coming apart. And it would just do this all day long. And of course I've just mounted this to a domestic motor but they would have been worked off a big industrial table or a bench motor or anything. But you can knock this up. In fact I've got a YouTube video on how to just mount this up. But you've basically got your tension control, your tension release for, for when you use the vibrator button which you just pull in or push out. And then you've got the stitch length which is this little one here at the back. If you just come in closer you'll see just that, if I just point to that there, that's the stitch length adjustment. And this one here is the zigzag adjustment, the slide there, that's the amount of zigzag that the machine does. And then you've got a little adjuster here. That's the pressure on the actual sewing foot. And then I've shown you the lifter for the feed underneath. And I've shown you the guide there. So that's pretty much everything. The Heinrich Grossman Anita in action. I list many of the hat machines in the book. I call it Lut Luton book, but I list just about every hat machine that I've ever come across in the 50 odd years and who made them and stuff like that. So there's a lot of useful information in there and a lot of little anecdotes as well. And also pop onto my sewalot.com site that has loads of information. Bye for now.